Okay, so today our subject is Gen 4 Pantagrad kits. Maya Racing has had three other versions, actually probably more than that, but we're just going to say three other versions prior to this. So when you receive your Gen 4 Pantagrad kit, these are the items that you're going to get. You're going to get a spring plate for the driver's side, you're going to get a spring plate for the passenger side, you're going to get the passenger side frame mount, it's going to come with uh, hardware here that's uh, basically bolts, washers, um, shims. comes with a plate to weld on the other side. We're going to go over how all these install. This is now the driver's side frame plate, panner bar, and the support bar that goes from passenger side to driver's side frame rail with this bung to be able to cut and fit the overall width. These tubes come along and I'll show you about that in a bit. So why should we install a pattern rod kit? This is Maya Racing's Generation 4 pattern rod kit assembled into our display model. So the rear end housings in droop at the moment. The angles are a little bit off compared to where it would sit normally. But essentially this is the kit. So we've got this frame mount here panner rod here, frame mount to the frame rail, spring plate here, and then matching spring plate on the opposing side. What does this do? Well, the leaf spring essentially has been functioning for many years and it's designed to control a certain amount of load side to side. So when the car goes around a corner and the weight of the vehicle is starting to slide that way, essentially oversimplified, the panner rod kit is keeping the chassis square over the rear end and if the leaf spring is left to do it all on its own to some degree it can do it but when you're running on a five or six inch tire wide that would be stock in 1965 or 1970 maybe seven inches eight inches that had a huge sidewall very little grip it really the leaf spring was adequate but when you're running a 275 18 or 315 18 and you're running a really good tire, Bridgestone RE11s or Falcons or something along those lines that have a ton of grip, now the leaf spring is asked to do way more work than it was before. So keeping life really simple, essentially what the pattern rod kit is designed to do is to help stabilize the back end of the car when you go to bigger tires, more grip, more power, and you're asking so much more of the rear suspension. You can have a rear suspension setup that will work relatively okay without it, but this is a substantial improvement and overall good value, our suggestion. So the next few minutes, we're gonna go over what it is to install this. Okay, so we're gonna start with essentially explaining what we have here. So you've got your rear end housing, you've got your leaf springs, you would normally have shocks here, so take the shocks, at least disconnect them and push them up out of the way, or if it's not too terrible, take the shocks out and get them out of the way altogether. So the first thing as far as the panner rod kit goes, we're going to install the spring plates first. It's super easy, basically just bolt them up, driver's side, passenger side. So the upside to this spring plate is that it's relatively beefy. It's definitely more stout than the stock plate that you've got. The holes for the U-bolts, you can run 7 16ths or half inch U-bolts, uh, which some companies offer either. You can get U-bolts from us or you can get them from Summit. This Basically, this plate has tabs on either side to center the leaf spring, and there's a hole in the middle for the dowel, so you can get it kind of centered that way, and then essentially just start bolting up your U-bolts. So now you can see we have the leaf spring plates mounted in place. Driver's side is going to be the receiver for the pattern rod kit. And passenger side is really kind of along for the ride, but we've changed the plates so that they're heavy duty, as I mentioned before, and that you can also use these for tie downs. You can use, as I said, 7 16 or half inch bolts, U-bolts. Essentially, I have my pattern rod bolt washer and shim assembly in place here, but 
going to take that out in just a moment and uh, set up the panner rod and mount the two frame mount bushings. But this is first step. There's really no adjustment here. It's just bolted in place and get to the next step. Essentially, there's two tiny shims, two washers, half inch bolt, and um, the pannard rod is set up with a right hand thread and a left hand thread. And the way you can tell the difference is that there's a groove on the left hand thread side and you're going to have a jam nut that is not going to be the same color as the right hand thread. So essentially, once this thing's locked into the frame rail mount, you can adjust the pannard rod longer, shorter, give it preload essentially once the thing's installed. So where we're at right now is I'm basically just going through the beginning of the assembly of the kit to all the things that you can't necessarily make a mistake installing. It doesn't matter if you install the left hand thread on this side or the other side, whatever. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm trying to get an idea of where I want the frame mount position to be. So essentially, ideally, with this particular rear end housing, I'd like it to be relatively parallel to the rear end housing. I don't want it to be too far back, too far forward, hit the, pan, hit the rear end housing. So I would say, just eyeballing it, we're about a half inch to three quarters of an inch behind the rear end housing, this particular housing. So that's where the pander rod is going to live. And then on this side, the frame rail mount is going to mount in such a position that it allows me to have the pander rod that far off the back of the housing. So as the housing goes up and down, it doesn't hit the panic rod. Okay, on this pannard rod kit, the next thing that we've done is essentially we, we've taken the pannard rod bar and we've mounted it, I, I loosely put it into the frame mount here. The thing to tune into is basically just start with each of these himes and their jam nuts totally bottomed out. And then once you go to connect the holes, you're going to spread it or tighten it to get the proper width that you want. This display, the rear end housing, is sitting in full droop. So ideally, once you finally set the length of the panner rod, you're going to do it. You're going to try to set it in the middle position, panner up parallel to the floor with the car uh, loaded, with the tires and springs and everything loaded. But for the time being, just to get things roughed in, all that really matters is that we get the gap here about, this looks like it's sitting now about three quarters of an inch off the back of the housing. I have the frame mount clamped up here. Take a, a marker and mark where it's at. Pull the frame mount back down. Grind to bare metal here around the perimeter so that you can go ahead and ultimately weld along here, along here, here, here. So I've got it also screwed in for the moment just for my display. But uh, that's what's important. You want to know that once this is in place, about where it should be, there's no real adjustment when you're installing it. Forward or back, the only thing to concern yourself with is that the pannard rod bar is not going to hit the rear end housing and it's relatively parallel to this line here of the rear end. Okay, so the deal now is we have the passenger side frame mount in place. And basically just because this is in my display, I just screwed it into place, but essentially you're going to weld it. Some people ask me continuous weld or stitch weld. My opinion is on a thin frame rail, because this is really heavy, I probably would stitch weld it. So one inch and then a little gap, maybe a quarter inch and then one inch and so on. Go all the way around and then the additional flat plate goes on the back side. The next piece is this crossbar, which is essentially the frame to frame support to be able to tie in and, and secure this particular side. And you'll notice that this bar is extremely long, maybe four inches or so. So I've done that on purpose in this new kit because I want to be able to sell the pattern rod kit to Fairlanes and Falcons and uh, Comets and 
all these uh, other vehicles other than Mustangs, and even within the field of Mustangs, I have yet to find two Mustangs that are 50 years old that the dimension from here to here maintains the same over and over. Some of our earlier kids used to have a fixed pickup point from here to here, and after a while we realized that the fixed pickup point is a little bit difficult to get it to work every time in a car that's been 50 years old, driving made in different factories. So, I'm more into the adjustment factor. So what we're going to do next is I've got this kind of mocked up and positioned and I'm going to go ahead and ballpark the cut. So even if my cut is short or long, we still have threads here of adjustment and we have a little bit of final adjustment in here. This thing swings about three-eighths of an inch. So that's where we're at at the moment. Okay, so now we're on this highly advanced, sophisticated back room machinery at Maya Racing. <laughs> um, we're gonna make a quick cut here. So I've got my mark. We're lobbing off about uh, five inches or so. And uh, after that, um, we're gonna go back over and fit it up and see if we need to make any adjustments. Okay, so basically what I'm doing now is I, I've made my cut, I've shortened the tube up plus or minus to where I want it, and what I want to do now is I want to drill uh, just a half inch hole or so in the side so I can plug weld the end. So at, at some point we're going to put a weld all the way around here on the end, and then we're also going to fill this uh, half inch hole so that the chances of having that bung come out is pretty small. So I've cut the tube to length and it's to be honest a little bit of a quarter plus or minus quarter inch type thing it wasn't dead exact and now I have this piece to put into the end so we call this basically a, an insert or a threaded bone and I've drilled my hole here with the idea of um, essentially welding this up and calling it a plug weld so a couple things to tune into this bung is threaded so you want to try not to get too much heat into it when you're welding into it. And in my opinion, I don't know, I think it's not such a bad idea to weld when you've got the insert of this, let's say, rod end inside, and then you can back it out. Uh, if you weld it open, which I suppose you could do, uh, then you're most likely going to need a tap to come back through and chase the threads. But um, I would just do my best. I would probably MIG weld it, not TIG weld it. If you have a full machine shop, then go ahead and TIG weld it and chase the threads when you're done. Um, I drilled the hole here, and I was thinking that this insert was going to go in deeper, um, and then I was going to weld into the bevel, but they leave a valley here. So essentially, um, I'm a little bit shy there, but if it was me welding, I would just go ahead and weld and capture the bung, and then come back by at the end, and then close up my gap here and call it good. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fit it back in here and then make sure that everything's right and I would most likely tack weld it up in the car. This is just the display so I'm not going to weld it but uh, you get the idea. So the step we're at right now, I've just installed this cross tube. I truth told out of all the different components thus far, this has been a little bit of the challenge of all of it, trying to get the distance right, cut it right. Um, when I tried to thread into this end, which was pre-welded, uh, the threads weren't so clean, so I ended up having to put a little assembly lube on it and kind of work it and eventually get this in deeper. And then it's still at the end of the day, once I had these two points fixed, I can't roll the tube like I did the panner rod, but I do have about a half inch of play in the slot that we have here on the frame outside. So it's pretty good right now. I would say um, I would go ahead and tack weld things together and then pull the tube out, finish welding it up, and then put it back in place. As far as finding the location for where the frame mount goes, um, essentially there's a little bit of wiggle room, but because these two don't have monoballs, they, they basically, once this side's fixed, it's gonna dictate where this side lines up. 
So you don't really have to focus on measurements to the back eyes on either side. It really begins with this spring plate. This is parallel to the housing. This lines up basically perpendicular to the panner rod and then it dictates all the way through to the end where each plate goes. On this piece, there's just shims in here on this side. There are no shims on this side. In the pattern rod kit, there are shims or spacers on both ends. So if you're looking, where do the shims and spacers go? They go there. All the washers go on the outside of every single nut and bolt. And this is essentially where we land. Okay, so now the pattern rod kit is basically installed. Uh, the, some of the questions that may come up now are, this is a display and this rear end is still in droop. So really what needs to happen next, car needs to be set down on the ground on tires and or the rear end needs to be you know, su supported by weight and the panner rod needs to be set uh, parallel to the ground to start. There's no adjustment on this side per se, but on this side you've got about four inches of range. So um, essentially what I would do is I would loosen up these two jam nuts and I would uh, put the car down on the ground, move this side if you need to, and then essentially lengthen or shorten the pattern rod as needed to uh, get it slightly. I would put a little tiny bit of preload on it. One of my customers called me after installing this and he said there was a knocking noise and he found that the pattern rod was sitting in there somewhat loose and it didn't have any preload. So essentially, I would make sure that there's a little bit of preload, which is tightening it, pushing it out. Um, yeah, I suppose ultimately you could be pulling it in too, but in any case, uh, don't let it just sit in there perfectly loose like this. Uh, the other thing is, I wanted to talk about why it is that we went away from multiple adjustments on the spring plate and multiple adjustments on the frame mount to just adjustments on the frame mount. So this is kind of a big debatable subject, I suppose. If you have, I had another customer call me up and he said that he was concerned that, hey, you know, why did you go away from all the adjustments on the spring plate? I, I like that. And I would say that it's a nice bell or whistle, but what I'm finding is that for our customer base, it's primarily good value. Most of the customers that are buying product from my racing are asking themselves the simple questions. Do I want a pattern rod kit? Don't I want a pattern rod kit? And what are the benefits? So simply installing the pattern rod kit, setting the pattern rod itself to relatively level, hopefully in your car based on ride height and everything, it's in the middle of adjustment, and then you can go up or you can go down. Okay, so here's uh, a tuning note. If you position the pattern rod further up, then the car is going to be more loose. And why would you want that? So if, for example, you're driving the car, you're at a track day or an autocross, and you're finding that the turns as you enter the corner, you're turning the wheel a lot and the front end is pushing, um, that means that the car is tight, or that means that the back end is tight. So ideally, you want a nice neutral balance of the car, where you're turning the car, it's turning in, it's carving the corner fine, and the back end is following it. Also, if the back end is coming around too much, then maybe you want to lower the pattern rod and then that'll help to tighten it up in the back. So really the deal is, I understand why people want more adjustment, why they want to keep the pattern rod essentially level as they adjust it up or they adjust it down. Um, and they may also want to adjust the roll center that way. But the fact of the matter is, out of 100 customers that I have, this probably addresses 90 or 95 customers. They simply want a pattern rod kit in the car that has some adjustment that will work. Um, perhaps there's different scenarios that would be considered perfectly ideal, but I think this bang for the buck is really the best representation for us. It gives you an adjustable piece here for a 50 year old car. You, you get a nice solid mount here. Um, the pattern rod is essentially adjustable up and down four inches or so of range. The spring plates, are, it's all heavy duty, it's easy to install. So this I think essentially is the best value for what it is that we're interested in doing at this point. Oh, another note is I've discontinued the rear sway bar. I may include that later or come back with a different rear sway bar. 
I have found through most of the people that I work with or other companies that I see, they're selling a rear sway bar because people will pay for it. It isn't so much they're selling it as a tuning device that people are seriously using. So I am saying as far as my setup's concerned, number one most important is good springs, good shocks, be them Bilsteins or Integras, go with a nice pannard rod kit, and you are going to be 95% there. Anything beyond that, rear sway bar, very case specific. So if you're running again, slicks, uh, sticky tires, concrete surfaces, you may end up wanting a rear sway bar. But 95% of the applications, this is going to be great.